Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to share with you my opinion on getting a master's in education, whether or not it's worth it, pros, cons, and for the second part of the video, I'm going to be sharing with you some other options that are much more lucrative. So, if you're interested, if you're thinking about a master's, definitely watch this video. If you find anything valuable, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with a friend who may or may not be considering getting a master's. I think it's got a lot of good information for them. Anyway, let's get into the video. So hi, my name is Lindsay and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I make videos about teaching, ESL specifically, teaching in Spain, and soon teaching in Miami as well, unless I get a different job. So if you're interested in any of those topics, hit the subscribe button below, hit the uh, bell for notifications, and let's get into the video. All right, so first things first, when you're considering a master's, you wanna consider like what is the purpose for getting the master's? What is the end goal? And for a lot of people, I think in my generation or like older millennials, it was really popular to go to college and then right after get your master's because a lot of people back in like between 2007, 2012 were like, oh, a bachelor's degree isn't enough. You need a master's to really stand out. And I kind of fell for that basic lie, I guess you would call it. Um, I mean, for me, for getting a master's, I did it because I had my bachelor's in Spanish, but it wasn't a teaching, um, it wasn't a teaching bachelor's in education or anything. So I needed to get a teaching certification, and I realized I could get a master's at the same time, and I'm like, hey, two birds with one stone. Only thing is, like, getting the master's versus just a teaching credential, added a lot more expense and student loan debt, which I regret to this day. But I thought at the time it sounded like a great idea for my goals, which were teaching abroad in international schools or Department of Defense schools. So that was my purpose to kind of teach abroad um, and to stand out as, you know, hey, I am very well educated and I know what I'm doing. But other people, they might think of a master's in terms of making more money or maybe they have a specific job that is required to have a master's such as teaching in higher education like at a community college or university um, or maybe they want to teach perhaps in a country or like the Middle East where they really um, like to see master's degrees and they have the money to pay for it and there may be other purposes maybe your parents are encouraging you to get a master's there could be a lot of different reasons but those are just some of the ones off the top of my head that I'm thinking of so yeah, you might get a master's for teaching abroad, or also people get masters to eventually pursue a PhD, or they just really enjoy learning. And I realize that most people who go into teaching, or a good percent, do it because they feel called and they have a passion for education, a passion for children, a passion for learning. And a lot of times they're not thinking necessarily about the money. The money is definitely, no one goes into education for the money. But I think something else to consider, and I, I think a lot of people, not a lot, but I got my master's when I was 25. And I think that people tried to get their master's right after college because they're like, hey, I just want to get it and get it out of the way with. But I didn't really take into consideration how it would affect me in the long run and what other career possibilities that it would help me with or not. And I just did it out of kind of like, just this idea came to me and I thought it would help me. But I realized it really hadn't helped me as much as I thought it would. And I realized down the road, like let's say in, in my mid thirties now, I'm realizing compared to my other friends who have careers in other fields, that I did not have as much career growth and salary growth in 10 years as they did in their career. And it is frustrating. It's frustrating because you realize even if you love the kids and you're passionate about teaching, you wonder, when am I not going to have to worry about having a roommate? Um, am I ever going to be able to live independently? Will I ever be able to afford a house? Especially if you have student loans. And so the passion you have for teaching starts to diminish, and this is where you see teachers getting really frustrated. Now, if you're married or you live with someone and you're sharing the income of a double income, the situation might be a little bit different and you probably don't feel the stress as much. But for all the single people out there, ladies, fellas, you hear me, okay? It's hard on the single income, especially as a teacher. So the first section I just talked about was like the purpose, like why did people get it, okay? Um, for different reasons. But now let's consider 
the cost of the master's versus the payoff. So when it comes to getting a master's in education, it may cost anywhere from, I don't know, ten to $40,000. If you can get a master's under $10,000, that'd be fantastic. Let me know the program down below. I would be interested in checking it out. Um, but for most people, I think they probably pay between twenty dollars and $40,000, not including the interest that's piling up by the thousands each year. That's going to increase your final pay to something like maybe, uh, you know, $30,000 to $60,000 after you have all those tens of thousands of dollars of interest building up. But let's say you're getting a master's education. Maybe you have a, a bachelor's degree in education and now you want your master's. If you're going to pay, let's say you're going to pay $30,000 for this master's, maybe $40,000 after you pay the interest on it as well. And if you look at the salary schedule between a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, literally in Metro National Public Schools, I haven't taught there, but I grew up in Nashville, so I'm just going to use this as an example, and I'll put the link below. You're only making $1,000 extra dollars per year with your master's degree that you just paid an extra thirty dollars to $60,000 for. And you'll be spending the next five to ten years of your life paying off. Now, that's not to say some school systems might pay you two thousand or three thousand, maybe even five thousand extra more for masters. I don't know what school systems pay five thousand extra more. Let me know in the comments if yours does or um, or how much yours pays extra. I'd be curious to know. But let me give an example of other master's degrees that are making much more money. Let's say you have a degree in business or something or finance, and let's say you decide to go and get an MBA. Well. With a degree in business, let's say you're making $50,000 a year and then you go and get an MBA and then you can start making $70,000 a year or $75,000 a year. You're making, with an MBA, Master's in Business Administration, you can make anywhere from $10,000, let's say on the low end, to $20,000 to $25,000 extra with the Master's. And I would say that's definitely worth it. And it really looks sad that a Master's Education which you're still paying a good amount of money for, and you're only getting one to three thousand extra dollars per year. That's just terrible. Or take my friend, for example, in nursing. Uh, she got an RN, and she probably was making around sixty thousand dollars, or a little bit, you know, more or less to begin with. But then she decided to move her way up in education to eventually become a nurse practitioner, making between a hundred and hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's nearly doubling what her original salary was, 60 to 120. And obviously that, that education is a lot more expensive than probably a master's in education, but still the, pay, the payoff is quite considerable. And again, it makes the master's, master's in education not all that exciting. However, if you want to stay in the career field of education, there are better and more lucrative options for masters in the field, and I will get into those a little bit later in the video. Um, so don't worry, there is hope. So let's take a pause right now and let me go ahead and answer the question, do I think master's degrees are worth it? At this point, no, I don't. For the amount of debt you'll probably go into unless someone's paying it, paying it for you, uh, I don't think it's worth it for a one to $3,000 raise. If you have a bachelor's, I think it's sufficient. And I'll give you another reason why. Also because teaching right now, a lot of people are leaving education. It's not a hard to get job. You don't need a master's to get a job in teaching. And another thing is, I feel that school systems and private schools are favoring less educated, not less educated, but like instead of master's, a bachelor's degree and less experience because it costs them less to hire a new teacher. It, like let's say for example, you're right out of college with a bachelor's degree in education and you come out and you're making $40,000 and you're competing for the same job of someone who's been teaching for 20 years with a master's degree and they want to make at least $55,000, $60,000. If you're a private school, you might not even be able to afford that person and you just want to hire this new person right out of school. I don't think schools even value your your ability to teach or how great of a teacher you are they're like okay they have the education and let's let's hire them just to save money now i know not all schools are like that but i have heard a lot are my two cents all right so that leads me to the next part of this video and my recommendation if you want a master's in the field of education if you're a teacher or something like that and my recommendation 
would be to go for a master's in academic leadership, educational management, something that gives you diverse skills that you can eventually move into administration should the opportunity arise or you desire a change in your career role. Or it could even be a master's or like an MBA. It could be something like that. It doesn't have to necessarily be an education, but something that's going to diversify your skills and give you more uh, management and a leadership roles or the possibility to get those roles. So let me break it down for you and the benefits of getting that master's versus a basic general master's in education. So it, it can give you maybe $60,000 or more increase in salary, which is I think amazing. For example, and I'll put this in the link below. If you're a teacher starting in Metro National Public Schools, I think the starting rate is somewhere around $44,000. However, if you get a master's in something in admin and you can become a principal, a starting principal in a high school is $103,000, which comes to like $58,000 difference, okay, for getting a master's in administration or something like that. Now you might be saying, I don't want to be uh, an admin or whatever else. Uh, maybe that's true. Maybe let's say now you're just starting an education and you're teaching, but trust me, if you're down the road and you're in your mid thirties, let's say you're still single, you're living on one salary and you see that there's not much salary growth in education because there's not, you're going to get frustrated and wish you had the ability to take a position. I mean, somehow in education where you can make more money. Additionally, let's say 10 years you're in education and you're just over it, you want out and you want to pick another career or just something different. If you have a, a master's in some sort of administrative or management type position, you're going to get a better job. Let's say if you have a basic master's education, okay, companies will be like, all right, so what kind of experience do you have managing people? And you're like, well, I manage five-year-olds in my um, kindergarten class. They don't care. To be honest, they don't care. You're probably going to start uh, back at entry level, making $12 to $15 an hour, something like that. But if you had a master's in academic leadership, which sounds good, right? You might be able to go into, slip into a managerial position and be starting out more like $20 to $40 an hour. If that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up. Um, but I'm just saying, like, think about getting a master's in something that diversifies and expands your skill set. If you're a teacher and then you get a master's in teaching or education, you're just learning more of theory, classroom management, more of the same thing. Okay, you can read books on all of that, but people want to see on paper that you have a degree uh, or you have a master's in something that expands your knowledge, basically. So to summarize this video, um, first thing... I would say I don't think that a master's is worth it unless there's a specific job or place that requires it. It's your dream job, then heck, go for it, especially if someone's paying for the master's. That's my first thought. My second thought is if you're going to do a master's and you want to do a master's, definitely consider something in academic leadership, management, where you can make more money and if you decide to leave education and start a career in another field, at least you won't be starting back at a crappy entry level salary. Now I know overall these are some generalizations and that everyone's situation is different, but I did want to bring to light some things I didn't know when I was considering a master's that probably would have helped me make a better decision. And my last tip that's probably the most important is if you're going to be going to consider a considerable amount of debt. I would really hold off to make sure that's the right decision for you because debt, let me tell you, ruins your life. Do not do it unless for sure you know it's worth it. So that's it for today. Let me know in the comments. Did you get a master's? Was it worth it or not? Do you regret it? Pros and cons. Let's get talking in the comments. If you found this video helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer on getting a master's um, because I do... Education is fantastic and it's very important, but I also want to think of like the practical terms of getting it and what it can do for you in real life. So that's just why I'm trying to just keep it real. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you want to see more videos on this topic, let me know in the comments as well. And thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up again. And I forgot whatever else. Subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. All right. So let's get